Hello, Lance here. Before we begin, I want to give you a heads up that is, this tutorial is going to be pretty hard. So in order to follow along, you need to get the basics down first. There is actually a very high chance that you will mess up somewhere and it's going to be very hard to figure out where you messed up. So yeah, I suggest that you watch the basic tutorials first and try to get the basics down. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare to follow along this tutorial. Okay, I'll put the links in the description. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get started with the wood. Okay, so in order to create a believable wood texture, you have to understand how wood is made in the first place. Okay, now, so this is a tree trunk, a block of wood. And uh, you can see that uh, these are the age ring of the wood. And uh, these age rings are actually made of cylinders, nesting cylinders like this. Okay, and depending on how you slice through these cylinders, you will get a different uh, uh, wood grain pattern. For example, the vertical slice will get you this familiar wood pattern here. And uh, if you slice wood sideways like this, you get the rings. And uh, if you slice the wood diagonally like this, you will get a uh, very nice elliptical ring pattern here. Now, you don't always have to slice the wood into thin pieces like this. You can also carve, let's say, a sphere from a tree trunk and you get something like this. And you can also carve a statue out of the wood and you get something like this. The cylinders basically go straight through the models to create the wood uh, pattern like so. Let me just isolate one of the patterns, I mean the cylinders, and uh, you can see uh, this is one cylinder of the wood material. And uh, let's check out another one and see. So as you can see, in order to create a believable wood material, you need to create it in such a way that it mimics the nesting cylinders of real wood, okay? So with that in mind, let's get started making the wood material. Okay, so this is what we started with. It's just a white box on the floor. Nothing special about it. So let's go ahead and select the box and uh, start creating our material, I mean the wood material. So the first thing first, delete the principal material. And let's go ahead and create a texture coordinate node. And we're going to be using the object texture coordinate. And it's like this. It has the X and Y and Z dimension. But uh, for now, we only need X and Y and not the Z dimension. So create a vector math node and change this to multiply and uh, multiply with 110. This will get rid of the z dimension for us and duplicate this and change this to length and visualize it. As you can see we now have a nice gradient from 0 to uh, square root of 2 at the corner and this is actually the distance between the point being rendered towards the center. Okay, So we will now cut this gradient into nesting bands we will create a math node and uh, change this to multiply and increase this number of it. And duplicate the math node, change this to fraction. And now we can see that we have nesting cylinders similar to real wood. Okay. However, these cylinders have exactly the same thickness and they are perfectly stretched down, which is undesirable for wood. So the next thing we want to do is to warp the, the cylinders a bit. And uh, in order to warp the wood a bit, we will use a, a technique that I called the space warp technique. Now, if you're a beginner and you don't understand what space warp technique means, then I suggest that you watch the space time manipulation tutorial that I created some time ago. In that tutorial, I talked about the space warping and the, the very meaning of the uh, texture coordinate. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's start warping the space. First things first, create a noise texture and connect the object texture coordinate. And let's see the noise. 
and create a vector math node and subtract 0.5 from each channel we get something like this and duplicate this node and change this to scale and uh, we can now add this noise with the original text coordinate change this to add there we go and let's see the result now the noise i mean the the warp is a bit too strong so we get something like this so we can simply lower this scale value to some, something like 0 0.1 yeah so now we we have something that kind of resemble wood but it's not quite there yet we can now change the scale to um, add or remove some details okay let's take a look from the top view and increase the strength a bit now as you can see the noise is warping randomly all over the place but uh, i want the warping to be towards or away from the center not just random directions like it's currently doing so in order to, in order to force the noise to warp towards the or away from the center we will need to normalize the the text coordinate so create another vector node and uh, multiply with 110 to get rid of the z dimension and copy it and change the operation to normal normalize and uh, we shall now multiply this with the um, the noise and uh, let's preview and you can see now the noise is going to warp the wood pattern toward or away from the center like so so let's move this down here and rearrange our nodes a bit there we go and uh, now we want to control the noise a bit more because right now the noise is uniformed everywhere so i want the noise to be stretched along the z-axis a bit more okay so to do that we will now create a combined xyz node and for the x and y we will use the same number so create a value node and we will name this value let's say x and y scale and connect this to the x and y and uh, use one for now and the z axis to be 0.2 for now and uh, let's move everything back all right now we can multiply this with the original text coordinate there we go so now you can see we have the noise being stretched along the z axis we can now change this z value to uh, change the stretchedness of the noise and we can change this x and y scale to add more details uh, around the band like this so now you can see we have something very similar to wood but it's still not quite there yet so we need to add more details and refine it some more now let's uh, take a look at the very center as you can see we now have something weird going on at the center this is because the warp is too strong around the center real wood don't have a lot of warping at the center and uh, the further away from the center the more warped the cylinders will be so we need to control that as well and uh, in order to do that we will create let's say a map range node and uh, copy this node and change this to length there we go and put this into the value input of the map range and now we can put this uh, output into the scale here all right now this two max value will be the one that controls the actual scale there we go so now you can see there is no warping at the center and the further away from the center the more warped it will be past a certain distance from the center there will be no more warp i mean the warp will be no longer getting any stronger and the distance is actually one unit from the center okay beyond that distance the warp will remain the same but uh, from zero to one away from the center the warp will gradually becomes stronger
All right, so now we have something that looks very similar to wood, but uh, uh, it's not quite uh, detailed. And uh, later on, we will add more details to the wood, but uh, for now, let's take a look at the bands. So you can see the bands are too sharp, and uh, this is actually not correct. So we want to control the bands a bit. Let's go ahead and rearrange our node a bit. All right. Let's go ahead and create a map range node and drop it there and create a value node and connect this value to the from max value and set this number to 0 0.5. All right, let's zoom in to see what's going on. So here you can see we have a nice gradient from 0 to 1 on the left side of the band. And on the right side of the band, we have a single value, which is one. one. All right, so create, I mean, uh, duplicate this uh, map range node. And uh, this value, this time connected to the from min value. And the to min value set to one and the to max value set to zero. And let's see the result. All right, this time we get one on the left side and 1 to 0 on the right side. All right, so now we can combine these two gradients using a uh, minimum math node. Change this to minimum, there we go. And connect the two map range nodes. All right, now you can see we have a very nice gradient from 0 to 1 and then 1 back to 0. And this value here actually control the center of the gradient, like so. But uh, you can see we have a very bad problem. When when this number reaches 1 or 0, uh, we get an error, which is all black, which is not nice. And uh, to fix that, we need to create a clamp node and set the mean value to something close to 0, something like 0 0.0001. And for the max value, set it to 0 0.999. There we go. So now we will never run into the error again. Because this number will never exceed the, the range of uh, 0 0.0001 to 0 0.999. All right. So let's zoom out and play a bit with our texture. So let's play around with the X and Y scale. Maybe, there we go. And uh, let's play a bit with the Z stretch. There we go. And uh, maybe play a bit with the strength of the warp as well. And uh, let's increase the number of bands. Let's find, okay, here, this multiply value. So let's go ahead and rename this value, I mean this multiply node to uh, band number. There we go. And we can increase this value to increase the number of bands. There we go. So for the sake of clarity, let's uh, create a yeah, value node here and uh, copy this to max value to the value node and connect this value node back to the to max value and uh, rename this value node to uh, warp strength. There we go. So now it's a lot easier to understand. And uh, for this band number, let's copy the uh, value node and uh, connect this here and uh, set this to uh, 15 for now and uh, rename this to band number and uh, this value note is the band shift value there we go so now it's a lot easier to understand the note setup all right let me show you again the note setup you can pause the video to see all the notes All right, that's it for this video. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to add even more details to the wood texture.
because uh, right now even though it looks very much like wood it's kind of too smooth and it needs a lot more details all right so in the next video i'm going to show you how to add even more details to this all right thanks for watching i'll see you next time